On this episode of Ask Dan, I talk about what Project Andromeda is, what do I think about that HP phone that was spotted at Mobile World Congress, and why don't we see LTE SIMs on more Windows 10 laptops? Stay tuned. Thoughts on the HP phone device at Mobile World Congress. Do you think it will be very similar to the X3 or a total refresh? So there's questions regarding Mobile World Congress recently at the HP booth, an Elite X3 was spotted there. So far, not a big deal, but this Elite X3 was slightly different. It had rounded edges, it had what looked to be a chrome bezel and some other slight design changes. Now, HP would not say specifically what this device was, but it's clear that they were teasing something. They also had a larger, what looked like a 14 inch lap dock available as well. So my guess here is they're teasing this for the fall. If you remember last year at Mobile World Congress, they announced the Elite X3, but it didn't come out to around September, October. I think the same thing is gonna happen here. However, I do expect a Snapdragon 835 processor, some improved specifications, and an overall design refinement. This will be timed with Redstone 3 and Composable Shell, which will be a big deal for Continuum. Remember a few months ago, we saw Continuum with windowed mode, and that's actually a really big deal. That's Composable Shell. I've also seen some early iterations of Composable Shell already in action, including things like rotating start screen. Anyone? Uh, <laughs> a lot of people have been asking that for a long time. Now, I don't want to necessarily say that's going to be there because it's so early in development right now. It could have been a bug for all I know. But there's going to be a lot of changes here with Composable Shell, and I expect all that along with the Elite X3 for to fall. So stay tuned for that. Why are we not seeing Windows 10 laptops with built-in global LTE radios? So that's a really great question. I'm a huge fan of having LTE available in my Windows 10, either notebooks, laptops, or even tablets. We don't see it too often, but I should mention there are a few devices. Lenovo and Dell do put it into the, some of their business line devices, but it's a configurable option you have to choose on their website. And it's not always available as soon as that device comes out. The X1 Carbon comes to mind. X1 Carbon always has a SIM, but sometimes it's not available until a few months after its initial release. Now, Samsung also recently announced the Galaxy Book, and that does have an LTE option. However, sometimes we see this only limited in certain markets and not all markets. The bigger thing here is I think consumers have not really shown a strong desire to have this. Most people have a smartphone available today along with hotspot and tethering available and they choose to use that when they need it. And that saves companies money as opposed to having to put it into the device, you having to go buy another SIM, create another line. So it's a lot of hoopla, but I don't think a lot of consumers really want this feature, even though I do, and I know some of you guys want it. Now, I'm sure some of you guys are wondering about the Surface Pro 5. Microsoft so far has been reluctant to put it to their Pro line and said keeping it to the Surface 3. Uh, we'll have to wait and see. I'm not really hopeful that they're going to do this, but I too would love to see it, so fingers crossed. What is Project Andromeda and where does it fit into Microsoft's larger scheme? Okay, we're heading into speculation territory now. Project Andromeda, there's not a lot known about it. So far, what Zach Bowden and I have heard, it's a very light version of Windows 10. It doesn't have the Windows 32 subsystem available, and it's just meant to run Windows Store apps. Uh, it seems to be very stripped down for maybe things like kiosk and other professional markets, not necessarily a consumer thing, but we really don't know much about this. There's also supposedly a hardware component to it as well. Now, Microsoft's experimenting a lot here with Windows 10, including putting it on all sorts of different devices. We see it now, of course, on Xbox, there's the IoT version, there's mobile, there's PC. It's all over the place, there's mixed reality. So we don't really know much about Andromeda. I expect to hear more about it, maybe at build, but maybe not until even 2018. Just put it under one of those things that Microsoft's working on, and maybe, like I said, for things like smart devices, refrigerators, TVs, kiosks, these kinds of things. But we don't really know yet, so we'll just have to wait and see. Will you be attending Microsoft Build, the developer conference, this year? Okay, so the short answer to this is yes, I'll be attending. I've been going for the last few years and that'll be the same for this year. I will also be joined by Zach Bowden this time, which is gonna be his first time in the United States from the UK, so that should be exciting. And Mark Wim, our videographer, will also be attending as well. Now, in case you're wondering what Build is, it's an annual developer conference for Microsoft. It's where they announce new tools and how things are progressing with Windows 10. It's not really a consumer event, so we don't necessarily expect new devices there, like a new Surface. That could happen. We don't. Know no, but it's not really meant for consumers. However, if you're a prosumer, and that means you're watching this video because you follow Microsoft News closely, there's gonna be a lot of cool stuff there about stuff that's happening to Windows 10 that you'll see later on over the summer and the fall and going to 2018. I don't know what they're gonna say about mobile either. I hope they do mention it, but expect stuff on Windows 10 PC, holographic, mixed reality, IoT, and more. 
What do you think the focus will be on for Redstone 3 on desktop and mobile? All right, to set this up a little bit, we're expecting Redstone 2, the creator's update, later in April. Redstone 3 is slated for October. That's going to be timed with the Xbox Scorpio release, along with PC and mobile. As to what it contains, we don't really know. Obviously, the My People thing, which was bumped from Redstone 2 to Redstone 3, will be there. I do expect also Composable Shell, or Seashell, will be also involved for mobile only. We do not expect that to be done for PC until later in 2018. Composable Shell is going to be a big deal for mobile, for Continuum, and basically bringing those two systems together. As to what else, I don't really know at this point. Don't forget, Microsoft is very flexible on what components they're putting into these builds. And things they've even announced publicly, like the My People thing, do get bumped and can't make it. So we'll have to wait till later this summer until we start hearing more about Redstone 3. I do expect at build, Microsoft will announce some major features, though, as things that are coming. So that will be very exciting. So pay attention in May. I read not long ago that Microsoft is bringing the full Office suite to the Windows Store. Will people be able to purchase each program separately? Will they need to buy the whole Office suite? So that's a really good question, and it is true that Microsoft is bringing the Office suite to the Windows Store. And I don't mean the mobile versions of Office. I mean the full desktop. So that is going to be Project Centennial, and they're bringing Office over into the store, just like you can download Photoshop Elements today in Slack. Now the question is, can you buy the individual components like Word and Excel and PowerPoint, or do you have to buy the whole thing? Microsoft has not publicly announced it yet, so we really don't know. My guess is you will need to purchase the whole thing, unfortunately. Microsoft has never really done a piecemeal approach to Office, and I don't see that changing. However, I think it's a good question because I agree. I personally only use Word. I don't use anything else like PowerPoint or Excel. So I too would like to have that option available. Maybe if Microsoft hears enough people complain or request about that, they will bring it. But right now we just don't know. I really don't expect it to happen. So that does it for this episode of Ask Dan. Remember, if you have a question, use hashtag AskDanWindows on Twitter or use our email, AskDan at WindowsCentral.com, and maybe I'll pick yours. If you like this video, give us a thumbs up and don't forget to subscribe. Thanks for watching. Take care, buddy. I have to kind of wait and see for a couple more. All over. Five. And we'll. <laughs> Shut up. <laughs> um, I need to hold the over, Chad. Yeah. <laughs>